We're back for another homebrew review. And tonight, the we're gonna, pig. We're gonna be a couple of pigs. No, just one pig. This is Homebrew 62's Bacon Ale. And so we did some research, went back into the archives. Did it like 10, 12 months ago? 10? This was brewed February? Something like that? Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. This is an oldie. You guys might have seen him brewing this when it was cold in Virginia Beach. Um, pretty simple recipe. Seven pounds of pale malt. A uh, pound of crystal, pound of carapils, and about three ounces total of Columbus hops in the boil, all added in the last 10 minutes. So an ounce at 10 and two ounces at five. So really no bittering hops. Uh, original gravity at 1044 and final of 1010. But we might have missed it in the video, but we're not really sure when you put the bacon in. So. Uh, starting to run late on the, on the clock, so we decided to go ahead and jump into this. Yeah, but so 10:44. 10:44. <laughs> I looked at the clock. I'm like, holy crap, it is 10:44. <laughs> but Elder and I got the privilege and the honor to meet Rick Homebrew 62 at the during at the, the home during yeah. the Homebrew Wednesday Homecoming. He didn't actually make it to Philly. But to did make it for Larry's birthday. Yeah, Larry, both yeah, of Larry's birthday parties, which awesome. was pretty cool. One one that uh, Elder was at, and one yeah. that I was at. Um, Great time. So we're gonna go ahead and crack into this. We don't know when the bacon was at, but we're gonna dive in. We know this beer's got some age on it, but we're not sure if it actually has bacon in it. I think it does. I just don't know when, but. Uh, it's pouring lovely. It's a beautiful beer. Look at the color. That's a gorgeous, gorgeous beer. Gorgeous color. You got the Dude, clear nice, one, I think. Nice I, I think I might nice have. Nice carbonation. I think I might have stirred up some of the bottom when I tipped the bottle back, or the carbonation, some of the uh, dregs. So, uh, lovely color. It's beautiful. Great clarity. It's been sitting a long time. Yeah. This uh, was with some beer that uh, Lermo sent out earlier this year in the summer. I'm not okay. picking up any uh, bacon -y aroma. Mm. I'm getting a nice, nice aroma though. Yeah. Nice malt. Not really any head retention, but uh, not bad. Carbonation for, looks really for, uh, nice for a beer brewed in February. An ale. That's held up real nice. Four and a half percent or something. Yeah. Like that. Yeah. Cheers. So here we go. Cheers, Rick. Thank you, sir. Mm. Mm. Pretty big mouth feel on this beer yeah. for a four and a half percent. There's a bit of a slickness. Bacon fat, you think? You might have I been don't know. It. That might be what's killing the head retention. I'm I don't know if it's just my mind doing it, but I'm almost getting a little bit of a smokiness out of this. Um mm -hmm. No, it's definitely there. But it's also pretty hoppy. Yeah. Uh, Columbus Hops, all late edition. Very nice. Very clean beer. Mm-hmm. Wonderful flavor. Beautiful. I'm definitely getting a little bit of a smokiness to it. And I think Rick bottle conditions... Well, I think this one he, he, said, he, he said he was going to do. Uh, well, no, he said he was going to keg it, force carb it, and then bottle it up so he could have it in bottles. Now, there's a lot of sediment in the bottom of this. You guys can see. You guys can't see that. But it's very, very murky. I can see it. You going to do the shot? Sure, that's so, where all the bacon is. That might be where the bacon is. I left you some. That is good. That's a good beer. Very good beer. Man. Wow. So. I'm not picking up bacon per se. I mean either. I'm not really getting like a bacon or, or pig at all. But what I am getting is just a, a just a great tasting clean beer. Um, so it's. Man. It's balanced well. 
but the hops are still there and they're kicking and I can taste that it's Columbus hops. And yeah. that's something to be said for a 10 month old beer that was shipped and has been sitting in our fridge. Yeah, it's and been... at different temperatures here because it was cellar temp and then it went to the fridge for the last couple of months. God, I don't know probably. when Larry, Larry shipped I, I that probably got these in June. March, June. April. April. Yeah, it's been... Something. You brewed this thing back in, uh, I'm going to say February. February. Yeah. Wow. Wow. This beer is held on phenomenally. I like that whole concept of just skipping over the bittering hop addition on this beer. That's what it sounded like he did. And just added at 10, 5, and No, it was just 10 and 5. Just 10 and yeah. 5. And so that's three ounces in one brew. That's pretty good. That's and, well, the fact that it's still there. Oh, it's tasty. And there's no... And it's such a pretty beer. Look at the color well, mine's, in that. Mine's a little bit murkier, a little hazier. Yeah. But you, you got the top pour. Mm -hmm. Beautiful beer. Um, so that's... I got nothing on nothing else, wow. but it's it's a great tasting beer. Um, super clean. It the, really the, is. It finishes so nicely. And it's a nice balance. And a wonderful From balance. Hot. So, yeah. kudos to you, Rick. Fantastic brew. And uh, I love the, uh, the 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 footage. We you know revisited that. Hadn't watched it in t you know ten months or something when it first yeah. came out. I watched it, but it was good to revisit that and take some notes down for the vid tonight. And um, Wow, cold brew day. Okay. <laughs> high of 39 degrees. Yeah, high of 39. And we're just now getting into that season here in Illinois. So mm. uh, cheers to you. Cheers to everybody else. Cheers. Find yourself an old homebrew and crack it open. See what you guys yeah. think. This is amazingly good. Mm -hmm. Very, very good. And I'm getting that... Slickness? A little bit of slickness like you are talking about. And yeah, that's what that, I'm getting to. That's the bacon. We hope Could so. Be. <laughs> Cheers, everybody. Home brew up. See you next time. See ya. So, Elder and I just went back and researched further because we were like, how the hell did he get the bacon? Watch Rick's review of his own the, beer. The tasting video, which I don't think yes. I ever watched. No. Well... If well, we not did, until... it wasn't fresh in our mind, yeah, for sure. Yeah, so, um, you know, video slip. But anyway. Extraction of the bacon flavor into vodka. Genius. So, kids, I'm going to have a link to all three of his videos on this review. The first is going to be the brew day. The second is going to be him kegging it. And the third is going to be him tasting it. Now, um, just a quick, if you don't want to watch the videos, here's how he did it. He took... About a half a pound of bacon, fried it up, and t ate the bacon. So, kudos, Rick. <laughs> That's what I'm, I probably would have put some in it. But he drippings. took the drippings and put it in to vodka. Some vodka, right? And then he ran it through. Ran it, shook it all up, right? Coffee stuck filter. It, stuck it in the freezer. Okay. Yeah. And then that that didn't freeze was vodka infused with bacon flavoring so he then poured the remain the the unfrozen liquid through a uh, coffee through a coffee filter, filter and then that was added it. that to the keg so boom there it is and the smoky flavor was coming from that smoky bacon and it's yeah, still there it's there nine months ten months gosh later. and that was a phenomenal beer Really, was. really, I mean, remarkable. It held up great, and it wasn't rancid. Cheers. <laughs> See you next time. Homebrew up. <laughs> <laughs>